The Sonic Show's Opinion Zone, Act 3. Hello everyone, welcome to The Sonic Show and uh, our new Opinion Zone for the new year. Um, I, this is Tom speaking, I'll be the host today, and we have a variety of lovely guests to have along with us. But first we'll start with our special guest star. Would you like to please introduce yourself? Good evening everyone, I am Titans Creed aka Pete Nevico. I'm sure that's meant to be the other way around, but there we go. Uh, you may have seen me on such projects as my YouTube channel or various other bits and pieces I've been on around the internet. Hi. <laughs> but welcome, we are glad to have you here. Now, we shall go to our classic all-star cast, starting off with... Hello, I'm Classic AAUK. Um, I'm not as good as, not as fast as the modern AAUK, but I'm much more beloved. Indeed you are. Indeed you are. And who else do we have? Hello, I am OVA Tanner. I'm actually a mole and wear a cowboy hat for no reason. <laughs> Here. Thank you, Tanner. And finally, who is our last guest? Hello, I am Green Eyes Era John O.D. Um, I come from the Dreamcast era, although I don't really. I make films and stuff. Oh, this is classic. Isn't it? I think you find that John O. was actually going to be Saturn John O., but then they axed it and uh, reworked him from Dreamcast. Yes. And now there are shades of it in uh, John O. Lost World. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> but 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 don't but they don't actually. But they, nobody who actually made the new John O. Lost World actually has an idea about the previous version of John O. Okay, we need to make that absolutely clear. It's all a mystery. Now, for this t this episode of Opinion Zone discussion time, whatever we like to call it, we're going to be covering um, a top no a particular area of the Zega, well, Sonic and Zega franchise, which is the all-star range from the, from where it's come and where we want to see it go. So, to start off, obviously, you know, I, everyone that's here, you're aware of the all-star range, am I right? Yep. Yes. So, to make that clear for people, that's things like all-stars racing transform, the original all-stars racing, superstars tennis, all that kind of stuff. And the Indeed. iToy game. Which and is the iToy originally... game, which I loved. It was a good game back in the day. I do miss the eye toy. When webcams were the thing. Oh. But yeah, pretty much as a as a like marketing ploy, having a co compilation of Zega's greatest or most iconic characters in one bundle would, well, in my eyes, I mean, I'm sure many of you can agree, is pretty much a great idea to make a sell. Am I right? Sega's biggest strength has always been its very rich history. Now, it's it's one of those things that traditionally on their own, those characters, and this is probably something we'll touch on later on, those, those characters tend not to make any money. Um, but together, um, with a big fat Sonic on the front, um, they, uh, they do very well. But it, it is that rich variety of characters which are really nobody else apart from Nintendo has. I think the the biggest point more than ever is that we are realistically living in what I like to dub every now and again as the age of nostalgia, whereas people around myself and Kevin's age who obviously grew up with the older consoles and grew up with all of these classic characters will see everything, whereas uh, a newer generation, like some of you younger folk there, you with the snappers on my bloody lawn. Um, <laughs> Stop uh, stealing our apples! Yes, indeed. I think all of us here are of that age where we've grown up from the old school. Oh, that's back not me. The... No. Yes. no uh, but everyone minus you, Tanner. You're Canadian, why it's understandable. It's, it's why it's Sonic and Sega All-Stars, whereas if you look as an example to PlayStation, it's PlayStation All-Stars instead of just one iconic character. Sonic and All-Stars is obviously because Sonic is in the West more of an iconic character to that yeah, appeals as the fan base in general. People are more likely to buy a game based on Sonic's name than if they just turned around and called it Sega All-Stars. Hmm. Although they did sort of try that with the original game, um, Sega Superstars, which was the iToy game. 
uh, what the same wasn't the wasn't tennis called Sega Superstars Tennis or was it Sonic it, and Sega Superstars? It was Sega, Sega Superstars Tennis. Yeah. Now I'd and, be kind of interested to see the sales of that versus All Star Racing. I, right, I can I can tell you that Sega Superstars Tennis did surprisingly well when you consider what it was. Um, I can't tell you the exact figures from from memory, and I wouldn't be able to tell you them anyway. But it's. It um, Sega Superstars Tennis did do well because if it if it didn't do well enough, then it simply there wouldn't have been another in the range. But yeah. it was strange that they made that decision to go away from the superstars name because they weren't happy. They didn't think it was strong enough because they didn't think it emphasised Sonic enough. Hmm. Interesting. It's always been that they, they, the Sonic as a brand is stronger than the actual company as a brand. Well, so, yeah, as I said, yeah. in, in the West, at least. I mean, in Japan, I think it's a completely different thing. There are yeah. stronger Sega names in mm, Japan. Indeed. So. But too. that's why you actually had, when the rebranding happened, the very, very, very long name of Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Because I think this, I think this, this story was told before on a radio show somewhere, so I have no, I have no problem in, in, in mentioning it again. But there was basically a big argument <laughs> between all sides of Sega as to what the name would be. And uh, SOA wanted one thing. SO, uh, SOE wanted another thing. Sega of America, Sega of Europe. And Sega of Japan, who weren't that fussed about having the game at all, had their had their preference too, and no side was willing to actually um, make any kind of compromise on it. Um, for, usually, in something like something like this, obviously one side will eventually back down and go, "Well, you know, okay, okay." This time, both sides pretty much drew battle and went, "No, it's going to be this." And so, and I, I can't remember what Sega American was. Sega American probably had more Sonic based, and it was a bit less in uh, SOE, but. Well, then it came, it came to a point where they needed to announce the damn thing. <laughs> and, and they still didn't have a title. So it ended up being the, the actual big boss in Sega Japan, you know, chairman of Sega, came in and just sort of went also as like the, um, the really fed up dad who's been aroused from reading his newspaper and has to go and sort of sort out the kids. <laughs> had to come in, had to come in and just sort of just like, sort of like stop fighting! Stop fighting. Fine. You know what it's going to be? It's going to be this. And, and he, he was him who actually get, gave the title. And it was like, look, it's going to be this. That's it. You had your chance to agree on the title. It's going to be this now. And, and nobody was happy with it. <laughs> and, and, and then everyone, was, it, it was like, it was, it really was just both, it was like SOE and SOA were like, went both into their, they both to their rooms, like sulking, like, oh, I hate you. But yeah, no, that's, 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 that's why, uh, that's what happened with the rebranding. But that's, that's, that's an old story, but I, I, I don't think it's one that anyone really took much notice of. <laughs> ah. So obviously, with the origins of it, being like from the eye toy, and obviously it had, 12, 12 games, am I correct in saying this? No, okay, uh, I, I, have, I, have grabbed a, I have grabbed a copy of the game from my shelf, um, which is a nice one. Yes, so you had uh, 12, yes, 12 superstar games in one. So you had Sonic, Crazy Taxi, Knight, Virtual Fighter, Samba de Amigo, Super Monkey Ball, uh, I think it's Super Monkey Ball Jr., actually, um, House of the Dead, Space Channel 5, Choo Choo Rocket, Billy Hatcher, Pull you pop fever and Virtual Striker. Whatever happened to Virtual Striker? It got out um, by FIFA. Um. I've never yeah. heard of it. Ever. Virtual Striker was a fantastic little arcade game. Um, it really was like the, the the proper arcade style of a football game. You know, with you've got. You know, three buttons and a waggly joystick. <laughs> and wasn't, it, huge... wasn't Virtua Striker uh, uh, a minor evolution of what we had for the Mega Drive games, the World Cup games? And that yeah, sort pretty of much. It's pretty much what I remember. But yeah, it, it was all part of the, 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 the Virtua series. I mean, it was it, Virtua Tennis and Virtua Striker are, are sort of 
the sister titles. But yes, that was it. Yeah, um, not, obviously... Sick. Sega Superstars is pretty much its own little thing, isn't it? So it's basically you've got a Sonic mini, you've got a Sonic mini game which is pretty much completely Sonic based. You've got a Knights mini game which is completely Knights based, etc., etc. It's just, I think the only thing it really each one has in common with each other is its control interface, which of course was the eye toy. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, I suppose this kind of begs the question: Can Apart from, you know, sticking everybody in go-karts and saying around a racetrack, can you bring these characters together all together in any other way, really? They experimented that with, te- with obviously, the Superstars Tennis, which, as Kevin's pointed out earlier, s- sold better than what most people actually expected, considering See, I think the reason how kind for of that cheesy it is. is, well, like, there was no Mario Tennis on the Wii. Like, I think that might have been a contributing factor. I've just I've just read a very interesting fact. Apparently, Sega Superstar Tennis has actually been re-released very, very recently. Yes, it, did it go to Classic? Um, no, it went to Mac OS X, and that happened on the 17th of October of this year. Ooh, we we totally we should have done something big for that. Clearly, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> People lining up at midnight for that. For but, sure. look, but you say yeah, yeah, but did it come out on Android? Because if it didn't come out on Android, oh! It probably is not far away, to be perfectly honest. Android seems to be the in thing with all the kids. Going on from Sonic, well, Superstars Tennis, it act- we went forward to a couple of years, actually, to All-Stars Racing, where the title actually changed from Superstars to All-Stars. All-Stars Racing was interesting because um, I believe it's one of the only games which actually saw a release in arcades because um, I actually was in the Trocadero and I actually saw a Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing arcade cabinet. That Indeed, that is on. true. I used to go there as well and that was one of the few t- things Sonic related to actually get re-released onto arcades. Yeah, it's it, w- it was an interesting situation because um, this is another one of those old work stories. But I kind of informed Sega Europe that the, the game was being was being worked on for arcades. And they didn't know. Um, I just happened to see one of the community guys actually who who works um, works with Sumo and and is up in Sheffield now working for them. And I saw him where I used to live. Um, he was ca- catching a train at my station. He just so happened to swap there and recognise me. Didn't quite—I didn't quite recognise him, but he seemed to know who the hell I was and was quite happy to talk, to, talk about work things. So that was that's fine by me. And he said, "Oh yeah, no, no, we're, we're working on this at the moment, and uh, we're getting a cabinet together, and yeah, so it's looking really good." I was like, "Oh okay." Went and asked asked the people that asked the brand people <laughs> who's been working on the game. Hey, did you know about that? No. But it, again, it was a, one of these things. That's a, it was a, a really nice, a really nice version of the game, and, and it was it was it was a little bit strange to see Sega actually putting development, as you were saying, to, in, into an arcade game, when it was. I mean, everyone sort of kind of thinks of as arcade as as dead, apart from the stuff that comes out of Japan, really. Hmm. Well, the game kind of lends itself quite nicely to an arcade thing, hmm. doesn't it? It's, it goes into that long. Um, it goes into that long history of Sega games and Sega racing games. Thinking of Daytona, obviously, is the most obvious example of, of Sega races um, that will allows multi multi person uh, multi person racing. So, oh yeah, Virtua Ra- was Virtua Rally another one, or uh, so, or Sega Rally was Sega Rally. I Sega think, Rally sorry. was. Um, I mean, I've, I've, a lot of people don't realise, and this is, this is another topic for another time, actually, of the amount of things that Sega actually make for, for arcades, uh, Sega put, put out for arcades, which are, which are, you know, things you wouldn't really expect them to. I mean, I, I found out the other day that um, a whole bunch of pinball tables, which I thought were, were really classic back in the day, were all made by Sega. Yeah, I know. They made great yeah, ones like, they, like Apollo 13, and a lot I think of the, a they lot, also made Twister. A lot of the movie, a lot of the movie uh, franchise time ones that they made. Yeah, yeah that's th- right. They made a lot of um, the Star Wars um, Speed Racer ones. Was yep, they Sega. made? Yeah, so so all those big, all, very big brands as as well. I'm pretty certain they made one of the one or two of the Batman movie ones as well. So 
all, all of that. Um, but yeah, it, 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 did, it did lend itself very well. Um, um, and um, I think they put in a different mode as well in that, although there was some extra button or something that was different. So um, my I'm pr- curiosity got the best of me, and I went and checked out the sales for All-Stars Racing and Superstars Tennis. Mm. Uh-huh. And um, basically, All Stars Racing sold 2.98 million. That isn't obviously on downloadable titles, but Tennis sold 5.38 million between five mm. platforms. Yeah, it's multi-format friendly, it's family friendly, and it's very bundle friendly as well. That's a lot of one of the things that Sega actually does quite a lot um, with these type of games is really try and sell it in. For bundle packs with retailers. I always saw in uh, magazines and flyers, you know, buy a Wii and get three free games, and one of the games was always Superstars Tennis. Always. Yeah. That many sales is kind of staggering. But going back to what you said about this being like the nostalgia generation, it, uh, I think that was obviously a, a big contributing factor. Because, like, in Sega Superstars, for the, the iToy, you know, you had a few franchises, but nothing that was really nostalgia-y other than Knights and maybe Puyo Puyo. But this one, Superstar Tennis, really started to bring in the classic characters. Like, I think that's the first time Alex Kidd has ever been in 3D. If I'm... Um, in Tennis, yes. So it was the first time Alex Kidd had been brought back since well it would have been sega gaga yeah it's like, oh, that's that's sega Gaga's pretty big oh school i think that that was a, a a factor of it and then that extended to you know racing and racing transformed that brings on another thing about you know characters which may not have been used it seems that sega almost seems to have a bit of a a phobia of using things like streets of rage in favor of virtual fighter which as far as i'm concerned doesn't have as much for following it does in japan yeah um uh, it, it's it's still one of the franchises that's that's a crown jewel and you, active yeah you've also got to remember that they've still got to reach out for uh usages to original creators of the characters mm-hmm. so if they don't actually have the rights they can't use the characters now this hasn't stopped people at sumo and i know this for a fact talking to some of the guys regarding transformed uh that they do uh loads of extra models and bits and pieces that don't actually end up being used for the game because they don't have either the actual um uh, authorization from sega or a go-ahead from the copyright holder that is the so, sega that has the actual uh push for the character so they'll go ahead and make it on the off chance for you know, they'll be given a green light. They'll they'll need to they'll need to make something in order to prove how good it would look. Whereas Virtual Fighter is, of course, in house. It's a Sega Studio based product. It's it's quite interesting because I mean, um, without trying to skip too far ahead, I mean, everybody remembers the big uproar regarding uh, all the PC versions of um, uh, like Companies of Hero stuff and the. Team Fortress stuff and various other bits and pieces. Now, I know for a fact that those weren't in pre-development and weren't sitting there. Uh, Sega went to them and said, "Hey, we want this done because obviously advertising uh, in a in a big name PC game that they're probably selling without having to look up the numbers for sales." But it's cross advertising, and they just went to it. And Sumo, you know, Sega pays the bills at the end of the day. They're mm. footing the bill for the character to be made. And it gets made. Hmm. All of those, as you said, the Company of Heroes, General Winter, the Total War Sh- Shogun Hogan. character, and the Football Manager Manager character, all of those make perfect sense within the Steam platform because they've got big sellers, big hard-hitting brands there. And it, it has been silly. It's, it's Ever since the first racing, there was, okay, the, well, the question was, from the first racing when we were when when we were working on it was okay is there any way we can get football manager and total war into this because they're like two of our biggest franchises that sell a hell of a lot and it seems a bit silly not to at least acknowledge them in some way 
That brings up another thing. Um, just so we know, All Stars Racing Transform was released last year. So we're talking 2012, I believe it was released, wasn't it? That's almost two years ago. Whoa. I think the point I'm going to make with that is that they released this back in 2012, and yet you've seen stuff like, you know, Rhea Hazuki's turned up. It looks like they're still sort of supporting it. I don't think I've really seen any other games which have sort of had a continued support like this from a launch so long I can, ago. I can probably give you a reason why. Uh, if you remember the iOS version of Racing 1, just before Transform came out, I mean, about two, three weeks before Transform came out, it went free. And essentially, at that point in time, it was used as a demo, as a loss leader, pre pretty much. Um, as you would call it in general retail terms, because it was out there then, free, people could play it and get used to the idea of the game. So it was used as a hook to get people, get people, um, aware of, aware of the brand, aware of the racing game itself with the aim, ideally, for them then going to buy Transformed. Um, and it was, and it's simply been carried on ever since then with improvements because there's, and this is, tr this is true of all of the superstars, all stars range. They have a very, very long shelf life. You can say that of any game as long as it has continual updates though. Any game can have a, a long shelf life. Quickly regarding, um, as we were talking about franchise, well, game stuff had so much support over a period of time by having regular so updates and new characters added technically the only thing really from this modern era even though it's not related to sega all at all is technically playstation all-stars battle royale and uh, correct me if i'm wrong am i right in saying they actually asked sega for the license for shadow the hedgehog to be in PlayStation All Stars, I wasn't I aware. I don't that. think so. No, I believe, I've, I've seen. That, that I've to, not heard that. The biggest thing you've got to do when you're comparing it to All Stars uh, Racing Transformed is the only contender that PlayStation All Stars has as a contender in the market is in is Smash Brothers Brawl, and I'm more likely to play Smash Brothers Brawl than I am PlayStation All Stars. Hmm. Now, when it comes to All Stars Racing. Yes, it's a racing game, but it's very different in what it offers compared to stuff like Forza and Gran Turismo. Go going back to the good reviews thing, I gotta say, um, All-Stars Racing Transformed might be my pick for the best Sonic game of the last console generation. If only for the reason of I have friends who hate Sonic with a passion, if only because of me. And they think it is literally... <laughs> the worst thing that came out of gaming ever but they love racing transformed and these people who hated everything sega and were you know they were the call of duty bros they loved that game they loved racing transformed and to bring those the dude bros with their mountain dew and doritos to a mascot kart racer was pretty big doesn't that come back around to actually reclassifying what a typical Sonic in air quotation get marked game is because realistically you can't call Transform the Sonic game where Sonic has realistically been a platformer. Well, I mean, so... I mean, I mean <laughs> they hate the franchise. Where, 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 do, where do you draw the line when you call it a Sonic game instead of just generic kart racer? I think when his name is in the title. I think that's a fair it, 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 that, that was that was I mean that's that was probably the most telling thing really, isn't it? In that yeah. of when the name got shortened to make way for Transform, the word that disappeared in the title was Sega. Well, yeah. that also, because that... Sega has a bit of a stigma to it. I really think the removing of Sega from the title is completely justified. With like mm. with like Wreck It Ralph, Danica Patrick, Team Fortress, um. That person from Yogg's cast. Y yeah, that okay. That was Lewis. weird. That that when I saw that, I'm like, am I am I having a bad dream? Did I eat too much like chicken and fall asleep on the couch? It's like I couldn't believe that, but sure. 
It's like it's it's obviously obviously that's a slightly I mean it's a slightly different situation because it's purely a, 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 a purely charity a, thing. Yeah, but it, it again, yeah, it's charity as Kevin said and going back to our point again, it's PC gaming. Because I heard a lot of uh, outcry saying, "Oh, why aren't we getting this for a console?" You know, it, people could buy it and still be charity this way. It works differently than if they did it as a PC thing. You know, it's it's a lot easier to grab charity sales via a PC yeah. game. It's, it, than it's, it is it's very different as well, especially when you bear in mind um, a lot of the things that do go on with the the console. The console system. I mean, um, there are tr- when there are charges. There are all sorts of charges for using the PlayStation Store. Uh, t- t- touching back to what um, Johnny, you started to say, and what, and what I said as well. Um, it it's again one of these things that why is there less demos and things on the PlayStation Store than on Xbox Live, and then on Steam. One of the reasons is, I'm not sure you guys actually, some of you guys may not know this, is that Sony actually charges for bandwidth. <laughs> so yeah. every time someone actually downloads your demo, and bearing in mind PlayStation 3 at the time, pretty freaking big, you'd imagine, <laughs> in terms of size, you get a nice bill through the post from Sony. So if it's a smallish game, you know, it's not going to have as big of a budget, necessarily, as a lot of others. All of a sudden, if if your game actually becomes, <laughs> becomes very successful as a demo, you're completely in the mire for your budget, because Sony charge. I don't know if they still do or not, but they certainly did. There is actually uh, one more thing which um, I've kind of got to address on the subject of All Stars, sure. which is... Um, We've had two sort of All Stars racing games. Does that now mean that from this point on we're now locked into? Um, I think All Stars a is a franchise. Of... I think All Stars is realistically a franchise now, and it comes down to uh, we'll definitely see an All Stars game on the new generation. That is going to go without a, a shadow locked... of a doubt. Are we locked into sort of just racing games though? No, I don't think no. so. No, uh, I no. There, there. I think, um, I think it was a, a point I broached with Tim a couple of times at the last couple of SOSs about where it can go there, and it's something that's been raised in interviews with them themselves. They've said anything really. We could see the the All Stars version of Mario Strikers for all we know next. I say what they need to do. I think what they do do at Sumo is they look at what sort of franchise the characters would fit in, mm. like just basically. I mean. It's a really silly thing, but if you look at how Mara has spread their characters, like just from the one type of like gaming franchise out, and look at what they do, you can realistically do something similar with All Stars. You can do All Stars basketball, All Stars football, soccer, whatever you want to call it. Um, there, there was the one that was touted. <laughs> yes, I, I remember, Kev. I remember you had a certain Easter egg regarding that back back a while, didn't you? Uh, well, no, no. Oh, oh, yeah. There was the Sonic. There was the Sonic yeah. Rex, as was did did do an announcement for All Stars Soccer, ass. which then yeah, yeah, ass, which which it then there was a fantastic um, press release which got picked up by people <laughs> with this same representative talking about how we need much more ass yeah. and how ass is going to revolutionise everything. Um, <laughs> And it was it was it was very suggestive, but there was there was the thing that was touted and has been um, said. Uh, I think Sol mentioned this uh, in an interview, but um, it's certainly been mentioned before. Was I guess they could do fighting, and to be honest, personally, I can't see them doing fighting unless no. there is a new virtual fighter. Because if there's a new virtual fighter, then, then that will come out, and then they'll take the engine and then work that to their own advantages. I but think the thing I... that was mentioned was the po- was, and this is legitimately something that was discussed once, which was, which I may have had to just step in and go, whatever you do, never, ever do this, um, and that was the prospect of All Stars Paintball. <laughs> what? <laughs> This, this was no. Souls so mentioned this before, okay? But it was one of the things that was that was mentioned 
uh, as a prospect and a potential thing was All Stars Paintball. Somebody had a bright idea to we could do paintball because it's like a shooter, but it's exactly. like a family friendly shooter because they're not being killed. <laughs> yeah, you got your you got your brand characters in, yeah. but they're not being a shooter and they're not being killed. And shooters are popular, um, but yeah, that that kind of died very quickly when somebody actually you know just looks at the idea as a <laughs> it was written down the list by somebody yeah 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 brainstorming probably yeah yeah, yeah. But no um, i think it's one of those things that would work out being like a good side grade but not a whole game yeah it's something like that you could probably see nintendo using in one of their mini like we of well nintendo land mini games yeah, yeah. Mario, it, Mario it, Party. It freaks a mini game mm. as opposed to an actual yeah full on fledged game. I don't know. Man, some, if you if you put in like play. like a level creator where you can make entire paintball maps and have like different characters be like different classes, if you will, you know, like one's got a paint bazooka, one's got like a paint turret. I don't know. I'd play the crap out of that. You, you mean almost you as if someone modded? Could... You mean almost as if someone modded Team Fortress Two? And then stuck a mouse chief in there because you know someone's going to do that sooner or later. Yeah, basically. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's. I mean, you'll you'll so, so you'll probably a fighter is the most likely direction it would go. Now, what do you think? I'd, be... ra- I'd rather it not be a fighter because I'd I'd rather th- and I'm not a big sports thing, but I'd rather see a, a football or a soccer game. Because then you're tapping into like the FIFA market, and that's quite a big market. Um, but yeah, someone was more talking about the upcoming DLC for Rio. I'm just going to say there's a very good chance that that character has been made and ready to go since the creation of Transformed, and they've just been waiting for Sega's authorization to go with it, wow. which is probably only come about because the Yogs cast had it on there, and nobody knows if they had a test build or an actual build of that. So, hmm. who actually knows? That could have been pushed to the front because it was accidentally in there. Now, the real question is regarding that. Obviously, they Zega done. I believe it was Zega that done the poll of char- top characters that they were, fans want to see in it. And obviously, yeah. Ryu was practically top. But other characters like Hatsuhuni Miku and Bayonetta, even right, let's, be fair. let's be fair. Miku will we're, not be in it. Miku will most likely be in it with the fact that Project Diva is Westwood in uh, next uh, very early 2014. Oh, that actually that no, you would not exactly. surprise me if Sega went. Oh, can we have Hatsune Miku since Project Diva is coming out, and people would just lose their freaking mind. The Vocaloid fan voice, uh, fan base is so huge that it would it would utterly. Like there, I know people Explode. who said that they would buy like four copies of the game. Mind you, it's just an exaggeration because it was like a Tumblr post. But still, like that would be a character because the fan base is so huge that it would push exactly. some sales. Okay, um, yeah, you guys know that obviously that I did stuff with Transformed and yep. I, I I created a character list. I mean, this is right back like day one. Of all Star Rising Transformed when I was working for Sega, I created a, a humongous list of things and list, list everything out because they actually came to me and asked, Hey, what do you want? And there was all sorts of things in there. And some of the stuff came through into the game, some of them didn't. We had things that was, we had something that was essentially what ages is, but with, with, with changes. And one of the things that I said was, when looking at this and, and, and debating this with people that say and people in the community as well, was that when you look at racing, whether you like it or not, you had um, the uh, House of the Dead EX characters in there, obviously. Mm-hmm. Zombio and Zombico, or whatever the names are. Yeah. And that was your Japanese character. Now... They didn't really use that so much. It was more of a case of, oh, we couldn't get, we can't put G or somebody in there because, or oh, adult. Um, but you could always have within that game, or within any of these games, one slot devoted to, we have a Japanese franchise. And the character that I had in this Japanese franchise slot had, was, was from the beginning. It was like, pretty much like the, the fourth or fifth character I wrote down was Hatsune Miku. Because you have this humongous back catalogue of games there, and it needs something 
to introduce it to the wider audience, this, the, the, the character to the wider audience. And for that, the, the party game, the brand celebration game is a fantastic um, fantastic bridging device to actually say introduce this character to to the wider market and it's exactly what nintendo did with smash brothers and the fire emblem characters yep. mm. because nobody knew who these characters were at all well, that, that's a from... bit that's a bit of a stretch because we had had fire emblem in the west before that yeah, you, you just... had them but they, they didn't have that wide street they didn't have that mainstream visibility no the, they were um... out there but it was still specific no, the um, Fire Emblem characters only came because of Smash Bros. There wasn't a single Fire Emblem game in the West before uh, Smash Bros. Melee. Yeah, but but, so, but, the, but the point is, but the point is, you could you can use this as the bridging device to, like I say, introduce. And for somebody like Hatsumiku, it's it would be absolutely perfect. You have games ready, ready and waiting in the wings, lots of them, that you could just bring over at any, at any point in time. Heck, it's you know it's. It wouldn't necessarily work well for you know Nintendo necessarily or a 360, but certainly as a PlayStation as a PlayStation character, maybe at the very least, it would be it would be perfect. Hmm. I mean, with some other characters like in the original All Stars, like um, the Bonanza Brothers and stuff like that, were pretty obscure characters which only appeared in maybe one game or two. But given Sega's history of having a friend, well having a variety of characters and they want to at least expand it and show it seems odd that something like Shamu, a big seller that Zega knows people would pay to get took have taken so long and nearly coming up to what two years now before giving the head the green light saying oh okay fair enough they've waited long enough you can have him now yeah but I mean that could mean several different things. If we think of what Transformed has become in the fact that it's just an advertising juggernaut now, I mean, mm-hmm. yes, only the release characters have been on PC instead of console, which I presume Rio will be on. I don't think there's been any announcement towards that yet, but it could mean that there will be a Shenmue amount- announcement soon. I mean, for people that care, they could be looking at it like that. But my biggest disappointment is that they've released this all-stars juggernaut legacy filler thing and not really done anything with the legacy characters outside of the game where's our you know new game for these legacy characters that you could really just put out there now that you've got this magnificent advertising juggernaut for i mean the, the, or or where is or where is the hd port remake of the classic game they were in to at least start that process that's true exactly i think the closest thing that you know we have to that possibly because it's not set in stone yet is like the 3d classics collection that's on the the 3ds and how they're basically you know they're remaking these old you know genesis games or Mega drive in you know 3d with some improved graphics and functionality and like for instance you know echo the dolphin 3d if, I don't know, it'd be nice if, to go inside with the release of that, they release Echo. I just really want Echo in that game. I want Echo in Transform so badly. So that's my number one You have character. an Echo fetish. No, I just... Wasn't, wasn't the whole fact of the dolphins in, like, the Seaside Hill thing, the, the Echo nod or something? Because you're not exactly going to get Echo driving no, it, around. The no, it, it wasn't. Glasses. It wasn't, and it should have been. <laughs> just have, just have the, one really surprising... One dolphin yeah. jump in the air really high, and then all of a sudden, all the you know aquatic life gets sucked up. Just randomly happens on the second lap. No comments on it. Yeah, That's all just, you yeah, need. Just the, yeah, it, it, it's one of those. It's one of those things that there was the opportunity to get a lot more references, and this is the same. This this is the same for all of the um, all of the modern ones, with the exception of Superstars Tennis, which actually had quite a few cameos and lots of little nods and things, I think, but that was because it was much more of a confined space, I guess. But there was the opportunity to have things like that to have Echo in the game. I mean, what was the, what was the big thing from um, the first racing game that was added in? It the was Rista. Rista, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, Rista. In the Death Egg with um, the Metal Sonic DMC. Yeah. 
And the reason was was given why he wasn't racist was because <laughs> this star from behind looks very boring. Yeah, he's just a black dot with. It's, yes, yeah, it, it's a bowling ball with a starfish on the front of it. I mean, it's, not, <laughs> it's not really a very. Which is very... why he's only the the flag waver. Yeah, but you've got characters like that that could be in there that are secondary level characters who could be popping up a, about the place. Um, you had it and transformed a little bit because you had um, the House of Dead EX characters in the House of the Dead level with a little ongoing story of them getting married. You had the Billy Hatcher ensemble cast somewhere. I don't think, I don't think I've ever seen them, actually. But they're, they're was, somewhere was actually sc- if you look carefully, they were scattered at the very beginning at the um, Forks section. They're probably on that stupid, evil, bastard winter stage, which oh, I yeah, hate yeah, with a goddamn yeah. passion. The one they're with there. the um, water section at the very end. Yeah. And then you've got that insanely sharp turn, which if you're not doing carefully, you're going to get stuck in the wall and you're going to lose all your hard work at coming first and end up dead last. True facts. True facts. I have fallen through the map twice on that level, and only that level have I fallen through the map on, and in the same place. I've not uh, fallen through the map, but I've had problems with that level entirely where I've somehow landed upside down and been as driving As soon as you down. come out of the water bit, and if you hit it with enough um, uh, speed, you'll actually fly and uh, you'll hit a part of the bend on the far end. But you'll go down, you'll hit the tree because you can't go over it and you just fall straight through the level. Mm. This I have to try now. Okay, um, speaking of Billy Hatcher, um, the... Character that got axed from the final lineup for Superstars Tennis was actually Rolly Roll. Uh, Rolly Roll was the uh, there was pretty much the, the character roster for that was pretty much set from an early from an early time period, and one character was axed, and that was Rolly Roll. And again, Sega Law with AAUK needs to become a thing. Oh, 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 one more thing. We were talking about the diff- the difficulties of getting rights. Do you know which is the most difficult franchise to get Toe-Jam and actually Earl. into this game? No. And the Toe Jam and Earl situation is a ridiculous situation, which is more or less, hey, you'll do this because people will say so, so give us money. You know what? And then Sega bet... turned around and went, you what? I bet it's a bit of a red herring. I bet Sonic is the hardest franchise to get the actual rights no. for. No. Nice. Nope. Is it, nope, is, because is, it a, is it a franchise that is already as a character already in the All Star range, or is yes, it some Star range character, which is an absolute nightmare, and I, I know for a fact is a miracle, a miracle it ever gets in. Every Shinobi, no, Shinobi would probably be perfectly fine actually, because again, so that's actually an internal Sega. Is it? Oh, but was but wasn't there a Shinobi game on PS2 that wasn't Sega? Probably, but that's still you. You wouldn't do that, and it's still owned by because obviously one of the there's obviously Sonic Team, but there was Shinobi Team. Uh, Is it by any chance um, Skies of Arcadia? No, Alex Kidd. I found a, no, hmm. I found it very odd. I'm, I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking about it's one of the ones that's been in there since the first Sega Superstars, and has been represented in every single game since. The base but, Channel Five. Yes. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Space Channel 5, not the music, for, for a characterization thing, because I don't know who the producer is, saying, is very, very strict. And yet Ulala's in about everything. What's in it. Yeah, but it's one of those things in that it's... I mean, the, the, the problem with it is that Ulala's one of your primary female characters that everyone knows. So you kind of feel like you have to have that character in there. But from an actual getting getting Space Channel 5 in any sense into any of these games has, has always been an absolute nightmare for Sega. It's, so it has nothing it was, to do with got, Space They got Michael? it into, the, into that Xbox Dreamcast collection as well, didn't they? Indeed, yeah, but that was, the, that was the um, original game, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it yeah. Was. It's, not, it's not creating new things. Creating new things is the big problem with Space Channel 5. That's probably one of the reasons there's been so few games. Yeah, because it was developed by United Games Artists under the direction of, pardon me for getting this wrong, if anything, um, Tetsuya Mig- Mizunagi, I think. Mm, as you a produ- have Wikipedia yeah. open. I, again, Maybe. This, again, this, again, this has been this has been said before. I say this in case somebody say gets really upset at me, but this has been said before. Okay, um, but and that's it's one of the one of the most tricky aspects of any of the All Star games is actually space travel. 
And surprisingly enough, even though Space Channel Fund has very few games, it's still very I mean, popular. It's had, it's, had, it's had two games and one on the Game Boy Advance, was it? Or somewhere? Yep, yeah, exactly. it was released on the Game Boy Advance in 2003, ported by THQ. It's also had a couple of mobiles as, as, as well, I think, or, or something like that, some other portable mobile device um, beyond I mean, that. I think what comes down to what we're talking about today in a general point is that DLC for Sega is very difficult to do. You know, I mean, they haven't really broached it properly for quite a very long time. And they're finally doing it correctly. Yeah. To a certain extent. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, that was, is there the money? Is there the confidence in, in, the, in the brand within the company? Is there logic in the company to is... really come across <laughs> with the idea? Well, well, th- let's not pull on that thread or the entire thing will fall apart. Um, <laughs> but, okay, okay, okay. Okay, bottom line here for, for everybody. Sorry, Tom, I'm kind of taking over here. Bo- no, bottom line fine. for everybody, but let's, let's, get, let's get this done. Assuming there is no limitations on money, on time, on confidence, what would you guys have in the game for DLC? Which character would you have in the game? Ooh, the one true Metal Sonic, Neo Metal Sonic. That's all I want. That's all. Curly I want. toes. <laughs> Curly toes. I would. Yeah, seriously, that, that, that's the best Metal Sonic. And <laughs> it is. Uh... I am the real Sonic. <laughs> I'm going to whine at you. You <laughs> sound like Ross from Monster Inc. <laughs> Hello, it's always boy. watching, Sonic. <laughs> always watching. Okay, I, I got I, I got mine if no one else like, was going to go. So, uh, you know, you already know I said Echo the Dolphin. But y- something else I want, other than just characters, is there's that little button at the bottom that says Extra Stages. And it's like, there's the two Outrun stages, but I just want at least one more stage. Like racing, you know, cart arena thing. And I, I know I'm, I'm, you're probably already guessed this, but I want an Echo the Dolphin one. If you think about it, the fact that it has, you know, time travel and it has um, all that stuff, you could have three different laps in three different eras, you know? And I. But you're saying you want an Echo the Dolphin stage? Yes. If you can't have an Echo the Dolphin race? Yes. That's an interesting idea, I must say. You know, like, the first stage could easily just be, you know, oh, it's all tropical and nice, and then, you know, you cross the finish line. Well, there's that spinny DNA thing. You, you know, you go back in time, and now there's, like, dinosaurs, there's horseshoe crabs, and all that awesome stuff. And then, you know, for the last one, well, hey, last lap, aliens come down, they attack, and... They might have to redesign the aliens, because if you've seen the aliens in Echo the Dolphin, they look exactly like the aliens from Alien, but, um... The foe. Yes. And it's like, I think that'd be such a cool idea, because everyone laughs, it's like, Echo the Dolphin, what type of game is that? Then I show them the final boss, and their mind is blown. If you, if you, viewer, do not know about Echo the Dolphin, play it. It is not just a silly little dolphin game. It is bad ass ignore defender of the future though it's badass if you can get past the first couple of levels without the <laughs> yeah you yeah. making you go insane get the three yeah. yes version of super dolphin mode like, you have no idea where to go <laughs> actually tanner i've got one now go on. um if stuff really is no object then i want to see treasure characters in there so be that either dynamite heady or the gunstar heroes <gasps> oh dynamite heady i didn't even think about that Ah! Uh, actually, why didn't we just look at the Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection? Since there's tons of games on it. But there's there's more. Yeah, surprise, but that one's got, a Mega you've got to remember collection. that you've got to remember that they won't have rights to use some of the stuff on there anymore. Like, like Fantasy Star. What about Ultra Beast? That'd be hilarious. All Star turns into a beast and runs. But oh wait, no, yeah. that would have been the original. This one. Yeah, the, pro- the problem with Altered Beast is that it's the problem that it's always had is that. Everyone goes, oh, Altered Beast! And then they sit down and play it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like, then they realise uh, what an absolute pile of shite it is. Because I, it is. I remember loads of people actually wanted a Vector Man to appear. Vector Man would be cool. Be interesting. Vector Man would be interesting from a design point of view. A design, could from be a his design own point view. of view. Actually, you could, you could imagine Vector in the fighter. Uh, Vector Man. Oh, no, Kev, you need Vector. 
driving vector man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that way. No, surely you would, yeah, surely you would have Vector just driving a computer. <laughs> it's like an office oh, desk with a computer it on it. Oh, um, um, for, for my side, very quickly, what I would have. Yeah, come on, um, Dominic, Kevin. Uh, sh- well, I've housed the dead characters in some form. I'd like to see G and, uh, I've, I always wanted to see G and, a- and uh, Washington Not in the, the ice cream van. <laughs> and all the lines have to be but, horrible English as well. Oh no 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 no! But but uh, Washington would have a big like plaster across his mouth and not be able to speak. Kev, Kev, you know that they would realistically be a PC character only, and their all star move would be typing off the dead s, where they've got to type a word on the keyboard while they're driving. No, because you'd have it on Nintendo. As, you'd have you could have it on Nintendo. You could have it on um, Sony as well. Because the, both of those, the, bo- the game has gone to both of those platforms. So, you, so it's something you could do. Or, or either that or um, Decap Attack. Shut the head. Oh, wow. That's old school. I mean, I'd last have. time I saw that, obviously, other than the classic, mm. well, the Mega Drive Ultimate Collection, was oh, actually from the original um, Sonic the Hedgehog comic. Mm. And I'm pretty the other sure. One, I'm the pretty other sure. One the... No, never mind. Never mind. Sorry, Jonathan. Go on. I was going to say, it wasn't Decap Attack sort of based on something else, though. It was another yeah. game entirely to begin with. It was based on something else in Japan, I believe, because it came out with a completely different name. And yet, from a track point of view, they can use whatever the heck they like from OutRun, so why not have the um, OutRun 2XE slash OutRun Online Arcade stick have a straight path and go through sp- like like four or five of the specific key stages that everyone knows and just have that as a track or just do a straight race from a to b and just have that as an extra mode oh um, if you're gonna if you're gonna cool. if, if, if the, but the entire basis of racing much like as we were saying that um sega superstars tennis was based on virtual tennis the initial aspect of uh, racing was based on the outrun engine because of the drift mechanic, and that was one of the reasons why you it was very difficult to have um Gilius in there actually going back to that was because how do you get one of these lizards to drift yeah. um, <laughs> it's a bit tricky. I remember that. um so why not you know just just go there i mean it's it's very difficult to to get stuff back for outrun or do anything further with outrun anyway because of the difficulties with the Ferrari license. You've got the assets. It looks damn pretty. I'll tell you, you don't what, have to Kev. Don't worry about anything like that. Anything disconnections or anything you had with our on, online arcade. Go I'll tell it. you what, Kev. If money was no object, I'd like Transform to play as it did when it was at uh, SOS in Brighton, because it looked so much better there, where you actually had to charge up an all-star move. Uh, I didn't. I didn't play the game back in Brighton, but but you were. But of course, Pete was the gatekeeper. He was the keeper of the games back in back in Brighton, weren't you? So, indeed. Uh, for those that aren't aware, um, there was a whole the transform played completely differently. Whereas you, anybody could get an all star move, but you got it via special things by doing tricks and drifting and overtaking and various other bits and pieces. Yeah, the co- the coins that are now basically um, what yeah. you use for the slot machine was originally the concept for so building up your all star range. Yeah, so you were actually rewarded for skill. Yeah. Yes, you were. And so they took they took away an aspect where it was rewarded for skill to make it more simplistic for the general. Yep, yeah. which okay. is. I, I think, is there anything else anyone wants to cover quickly, or should we call this a wrap? I'm... I think we're, we're just about done, yeah. really. Unless I think we've covered everything. Specific to bring up. I mean, I'm looking forward to what we get in Transformed, in Lost World, and who knows, maybe it's a growing trend that Sega are actually going to support their games with decent DLC. But I think if they do it right and continue the way they're going, it, they could make all of their games decent advertised juggernaut markets, and I'd still like to see some new games from these legacy characters that we keep seeing. Indeed. Well, that, that wraps it up for this um, quite a long episode of Opinion Zone. But thank you, everyone that's came in. Uh, thank you, Pete, for joining us for this special episode. Thank you for inviting me. 
That's okay. We'll we'll be more than happy to have you back on the show for another topic sooner or later. Woo-hoo. Whenever we do one, <laughs> it is well, six months later. Yeah, in like twenty sixteen. I would also like we'd like to thank also John for coming on, Tanner yes. and Kevin as always. You're most welcome. Been fun. That's good to hear. Now, obviously, we're going to sign off. Um, anyone that's enjoyed listening to this, if you've got any views yourself, um, feel free to post up on the Facebook t- page. It'll be which is um, Facebook slash the Sonic Show. And this has been Sonic Show. This has been our opinion zone. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Until next time. Ciao. 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 And that was the Sonic Show's Opinion Zone. Copyright Disco Ponies Productions. Sonic the Hedgehog is copyright of Sega Corporation. Published material and comments are those of the respective person and not of the Sonic Show. All rights reserved. Thanks for listening. We were making up a fan fiction story, and then I started going on about how there was an evil master emerald called the Kaiser Emerald. <laughs> and it was it was actually strange because it was really good, and then we lost it all because Donnie came in. <laughs> Damn it, Donnie.